Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome to a series where we're going to be talking about synthesizing drum sounds. In this series, we're going to be making use of the Korg Volker drum in our examples, but the techniques and ideas that we'll be talking about uh, will be transferable to any other synthesizer, whether or not it's really meant to be a drum machine, because remember, anything's a drum machine if you're brave enough. So let's kick this series off appropriately enough by talking about kick drums. As a kick drum is a physical thing that exists in the real world, let's uh, start off by actually taking a listen to a, an acoustic real life kick drum from a drum kit. So I kind of think of a kick drum as having two distinct parts. We've got the attack, that's that thwack as the beater hits the skin of the drum, and then we have the tone that sustaining part uh, that gives the body of the sound. And those are the two ideas that we're going to think about when we are synthesizing our drum sound. So in these examples, I'm gonna be making use of my free online patch editor for the Volker drum. Uh, it's free for you to use, there's a link in the description of the video. Um, but there's nothing here that I'm doing that you can't do on the unit itself. It just means I don't have to scroll and, and, and click about so much. So let's make our way down to part one, which is traditionally where you put your kick drums. And let's start thinking about how a kick drum sounds. So the traditional way to um, make a kick drum sound, uh, you can do all on one uh, oscillator if you like. So uh, I've turned layer two down all the way uh, and I've just got a sine wave just bonging along here um, as my kick drum sound at the moment. Obviously it's not particularly kicky although it's in some instances it can still be pretty uh, workable actually. Uh, so let's just start by taking a look at our sound source. So I've got a sine wave. Sine wave it's certainly kind of the traditional place to start with kick drum. Um, my mod type at the moment is set to the attack decay and my ampg at the moment is set to my um, linear attack decay although we'll have a play with the exponential as well as we go along so i'm just going to start by just um just shortening this a little bit and i mean that itself is kind of a kick drum sound we'd probably maybe pitch it down a little bit lower that's workable. The reason that that's workable on the uh, Volker drum in particular is because when you've got the attack of the envelope generator down so low, it's really, really attacky and you kind of get a click at the start of your sound anyway. And that gives you a sense of attack. But let's talk about the traditional way of um, making a kick drum sound and that is by putting a short and fairly big um, pitch envelope at the start of um, the sound. So our mod type is a tactic, which is what we want. And as we come over to our mod amount here, uh, when we start to turn it up, you'll start to hear that it, you'll get a pitch up at the start of the sound. It could be quite a big pitch up, and it? we get sort of bibbly bobbly tom sounds. Now you can hear at the moment that pitch is dragging off quite uh, slowly. If we open up the uh, envelope generator, you can hear that that is a slow descent down. But if we make that much, much faster, uh, take a listen to what happens. As we start to turn it up, we get sort of that zappy sound. So here we are at kind of a zappy kick drum sound. And as we make it go faster, that uh, very fast pitch there almost doesn't sound like a pitch slide anymore it sounds like a, a thunk and with this real basic way of thinking about um, kick drum sounds um, everything about the character of the sound comes from balancing your mod amount and your mod rate essentially so how much pitch bend you're doing and how fast that pitch bend is happening so um, at the moment we've got a, quite a big amount of pitch bend here and um, a pretty fast um, uh, decay there. If we were to lower the amount, you don't get as an attacky sound, but we can maybe make it slower to make it more about the body and less about the attack. Obviously that sounds a bit weird now because it's so uh, such a big pitch bend there. 
So but if we make the model great much faster, you get a real obvious click there. Like really, really obvious click there. Uh, and sort of deciding how you want to deal with this sort of front end of your notes here is kind of the, the crux to this whole thing. A bit more natural, but still quite a lot of punch there. If we lower this down to zero, you can hear how much even that, what seems like quite a moderate amount of pitch uh, bend at the start of the note is, is, is creating. And maybe with this, we could go slower and make it start to hear a whoop, whoop at the start of the note more of a soft drum sound. You can even take some of the um, attack to the front there, but you've still got that pitch bend, but we're not getting that clicky envelope sound so much anymore. Which is pretty cool. And we might want to make it much shorter. We don't need big 808 long drawn out sounds every time. Maybe here we'd want to actually make it more clicky. And it really is all about balancing your pitch bend here if you're just using the one oscillator, that is. But of course, on the Volker drum at least, we actually have our two different layers. And what that means is that if we want, we can dedicate one of our layers to dealing with the tone part of the uh, sound and the other layer to tailor uh, the attack and it means that we don't have to use um, that sort of pitch bend approach to get our attack. We, we can, but we can maybe uh, tailor it in a slightly different way. So t let's um, take a look at working that way instead. So let's start by um, adjusting layer one to be much more about the body of the sound and less about that attack. So we can still have a bit of a mod uh, uh, drop off. We kind of want a, a bit of a, a pitch bend anyway, because you kind of get that from the kick drum anyway. Just soften the attack here, so we're gonna work with the attack on the other one. Maybe make it a bit longer. Okay, so here we've got something that's very sort of soft sounding. Uh, so we've kind of lost uh, our attack at this stage. So uh, let's bring back some of that attack with layer two. And we can do that in a couple of different ways. Um, so let's start by thinking about sort of working a similar way that we we were before, but being able to kind of uh, tailor it a bit more because we're not having to worry about the rest of the sound. So let's just bring up this other one here and it's pinging away like that. It's not what we want at all. So uh, the first thing we could do is we could work in exactly the same way uh, to get our attack um, by having that sort of pitch bendy kind of thing happening. But because we are only worried about the attack, we could use a sawtooth wave perhaps instead, which has a bit more harmonics. So uh, let's make this much shorter for the moment, and we'll go even shorter than that probably, but um, just for the moment. And we can do a similar sort of thing here with our mod rate, we can set it quite high. And start to get that attack with But of course, we probably won't make this really, really short with our EG. And now, because we have this kind of a attack on a separate layer, we can fine tune how much of it we want to bring in. So we can choose the tonality separate to its level. So we can be a bit more subtle there. Get much more high-pitched sound in there if we want to. Just bring a tiny bit of it in. Or perhaps we want something that's less. Pingy and a bit more sort of, almost like a squelchy sound there, which is kind of cool. We bring more of that in. Kind of an interesting sound. Of 
Cool. So the other way that I like to um, add a, an attack to my kick drum sound is actually by making use of uh, noise, uh, which is a slightly different approach. Let's just um, get the amount and write down zero for a moment. So we just have a, a, another oscillator going on top there. Just make it a bit more obvious. Uh, I'm going to switch over to the uh, band passed noise because I think that's often the one that I, I go towards. So we, now we have a uh, uh, almost snarey sound, I guess. But when we make that much shorter, I think this works well if the body's a bit shorter as well. See, that's a bit loud, maybe. And remember, with the noise source, it's the uh, pitch which will adjust basically the filter cutoff, so band passing here. Something quite nice there. Even shorter. And of course we could combine the two ideas, so we could have uh, layer one doing the pitch bendy type of attack and also having a uh, layer two adding that additional um, noise here. So if we just... So we're now getting that sort of classic kick drum sine wave approach, but with that noise over the top to give it that little bit more sort of punch. And actually, something about that makes it feel more real to me, more acoustic. Don't know why that is in particular. Perhaps that's uh, an effect of the fact that if you tend to listen to a kick drum in a room, there's usually a snare uh, drum in the room as well, and that's going to be rattling along with it, and you've got the room tone as well. But I think that's pretty cool. So without the noise, back to our sort of tubby kick drum sound. We can bring that attack in there, which is quite neat. Of course, the other thing that is cool if we're making use of a second uh, uh, layer to give our attack and I'll just move back to using the um, sawtooth for, the, for this for a second just get back to that yeah so something like that uh, it means that we don't have to be um, thinking about our uh, tonal bit in a plain um, a sine wave approach. So for example, what we could do here uh, is we could switch over to our mod type being the um, frequency modulation LFO. And if we go real fast here, get into FM. start to define our um, body of our drum in different ways. It doesn't have to be about that classic sine wave anymore. And we can introduce FM get a different feel. And of course, another thing that we would often do on a kick drum, of course, is give a bit of a drive, give it some meanness that way. You could try the wave folder, but it's going to introduce quite a lot of higher harmonics, but that's kind of working here. Yeah. That's weirdly almost <laughs> almost brought in like a reverb sound to it, hasn't it? It's pretty interesting. If we wanted to be 8-bit, then we could 
reduce the bits. That's another way that we can use to bring in uh, the approximation of noise as well. So we're now uh, quite a long way away from that traditional single oscillator sine wave kick drum sound. But it's still pretty cool. Anyway, I hope that was interesting and useful. If it was, please do take the time to click on that thumbs up button. Thank you so much. And also make sure you're subscribed to the channel because we've got some more synth stuff coming up as always. Um, as we um, make our way into the new year, hopefully get another one of these videos out uh, before the end of the year, hopefully. Uh, and then I guess we're into January. I don't know how I'm gonna manage that with a one and a bit year old in the house, but. Uh, We'll see how many jams I get out in January. Um, if there's any of my uh, equipment that you particularly want to see in January, then do let me know in the comments. Um, I've got a feeling it's going to be pretty centered around uh, the OPZ, maybe some of the Electron stuff, uh, just because it's so self-contained and I can do it um, in any room in the house, but anyway, we'll see. Anyway, enough of my rambling. Uh, as always, thank you so much for joining me today. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.